Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today for Testimony Tuesday. I am so glad you are here. Before I get started, uh, like I said in one of my previous videos, I live next to an airport. And for some reason, as soon as I decide to do this video, airplanes started flying over. But I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway and I pray that you guys can have no problem hearing me uh, because I must have filled this assignment today. Anyway, before I get started, I want to put this disclaimer out there that I am, I am in no way criticizing the office of pastor. That's not what I'm doing. I am a pastor myself, and I know the responsibility of being a pastor because that's my calling, and that's what I do. So I'm in no way downplaying the office of pastor. I'm in no way telling you not to submit or follow your pastor. That is not what I'm saying, so please do not put those words in my mouth. I am sharing my personal testimony, my personal journey to fulfilling the call that's on my life. And sharing my journey is an assignment of my life from God. Because someone who's going to listen at this video needs to hear it. Someone has experienced the same thing or someone is experiencing the same thing right now. And God wants to speak to them through my story. So I want to put that out there first. If this is the first video you are watching in the series Testimony Tuesdays, please go to the playlist and listen to the introduction and listen to the first two videos that I posted in order for you to follow along with this one. Because I'm picking up where each one left off. So let's get started. So I'm going to pick up, pick up where I left off last Tuesday. One Sunday, my pastor preached a message entitled, God's Purpose Versus Man's Preference. He told us that God has a purpose and assignment for everyone's life. And he told us that we needed to be operating in that purpose. And if we didn't know what God's purpose was for our lives, we needed to find out. Y'all, this sermon blew my mind. I had no idea whatsoever that I was born for a reason. I had never imagined that God had a personal plan and purpose for my life. I remember on my way home from church this Sunday, I remember that God had spoken that same thing to me the day I was going to kill myself. I remember God saying, I love you and I have a plan for your life. I thought to myself, could God really have a purpose for my life? And if that's true, then I have wasted my entire life up to now. I decided to do another 30-day fast and I wrote down my reasons for, for the fast. At that time, I was smoking. Uh, I was addicted to nicotine cigarettes. So I wrote down my reasons for the fast, and I wrote that, God, I want you to help me to stop smoking and to please tell me what my purpose is. I want to know what gifts you have put inside of me and what I was to pursue and accomplish on the earth. This was in 1999 right after I joined my new congregation. On the third day of my fast, God spoke to me saying, don't focus on the smoking at this time. I want you to fast for preparation because I am preparing you for your purpose. And when the preparation process is over, I will tell you what you are to accomplish for me on the earth. So y'all, I continued the fast. And I obeyed God and I fasted only for preparation. And time went on and on. And I spent more and more time alone with the Lord. 
I wasn't doing anything because I was new to this church. So I decided to join the choir and later I became a part of the dance ministry. By the time the new year started, God still had not told me what his purpose was for my life. Then, in July of the year 2000, I began another fast. And this time, I was fasting and seeking God because of dreams and visions I was having. Now, these dreams and visions were nothing new to me. I've been dreaming since I was probably my entire life. Far back as I can remember, the dream started when I was about six years old. So it wasn't nothing new. It was just that I was experiencing more and more dreams and visions and they were coming to pass sooner. And I just wanted God to tell me why this was happening to me. So I fasted and I sought the Lord. And on the seventh day of my fast, one of my sisters in the Lord from church called me and said that God wanted me to go to the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter. Now listen, y'all. Watch God. Look how awesome he is. This girl knew nothing about my fast. As a matter of fact, she didn't even know me. <laughs> she had got my phone number from the church secretary. She didn't know me and she didn't have no idea that I was fasting and seeking God. And that at that very moment when she called, I had just opened my Bible to study. So I began to cry because I knew that God had heard my cry and that he was about to give me an answer about what was happening to me. So I asked God to give me ears to hear what his spirit was about to say to me and give me a heart to receive it, but not only receive it, to obey it. Because you see, you guys, I knew that God was about to answer me. I knew he saw me seeking him. He saw the fasting and the crying out and he was about to answer my prayer. When I turn to the book of Jeremiah, y'all, when I tell you, God's presence and glory filled my living room. It was so heavy that I was about to lie prostrate on the floor in his presence. But suddenly, God began to speak to me. And this is what he said, y'all. He said, ignore Jeremiah's name and replace it with your name. Then he continues saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and approved of you as my chosen instrument. Before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you, and I appointed you as a prophetess to the nations. And suddenly, y'all, I told God, I cannot speak for you because I am a woman. Now, that may sound strange to you guys. <laughs> But I grew up in the Baptist church, and I'm not saying that all Baptist churches believe this. But the church I came from been believing women prophesying or preaching. So I guess that's why I responded to God that way and said, I cannot speak for him because I am a woman. Then God continued to say to me, do not say I am a woman. For you shall go to whoever I command you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces or their words, for I am with you to deliver you. Then he touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. I have appointed you to the oversight of my people and the nations to root out and pull down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. I was so shocked and in awe of what God had just said to me. I could not move, literally, I could not move, y'all. At first, I told God, I am not worthy. I cannot do this. And God said to me, yes, you can and you will, for I have prepared you for it. I have divinely strengthened you. This is my purpose for your life. Y'all, I was scared to death. I thought, why me? <laughs> Who am I? There are so many people much more qualified. I was trembling. I was trembling with the fear of the Lord because God's purpose humbles me. For the next three weeks, I finished my fast and I spent time with God. I had so many supernatural experiences with him. 
So when my fast was over, I decided to go to my pastor and let him know that I did what he had said and God had given me my purpose. I was so afraid and excited. I thought that my pastor would be in awe of God also. But y'all, I was about to be surprised. On the following Sunday afternoon, my husband and I met with our pastor in his office. I began to share with him how I had fasted and saw God after he had preached that sermon about God's purpose for our lives. And I continued to tell him how God spoke to me and said that he was preparing me for it. And when the preparation was over, he would tell me and that a few weeks ago, God had told me what my purpose was. I went on to tell him how God had called me to the five-fold ministry office of prophetess. And as soon as I said this, y'all, my pastor immediately <laughs> told my husband and I to go to 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 11 and verse 3. And he told my husband to read it out loud. And this is what it says. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Wow. He went on to say that God did not say that to me, that God would never put a woman in a position where she would have authority over a man. He continued to tell me that he did not believe me and that office required me to be ordained and that he was not going to ordain me because if he did that, it would give me an opportunity to become a pastor. And he knew God would not ever allow that. He told me that I needed to spend some time with him. I needed to spend some time with him and to take some tests in a book and to take some tests in a book so I could figure out what my gifts were. You guys, I can't even find the words in the human language to explain to you how I felt when I left my pastor's office that day. I was so confused and hurt. This was my pastor and my friend. I loved him with all my heart and I respected him as my pastor. Y'all, I cried all the way home. I was thinking to myself, this is my pastor God, the under shepherd of this church. I sought him because of the sermon that you gave him to preach. I thought to myself, God, is he right? I mean, he is, he is the pastor. Is he right, God? Am I wrong? Did I not, did I not hear you correctly? God, I was so confused. When I made it home from church, I closed myself up in my room and I cried out to God like my life depended on it. I laid there on that floor and I cried out to God for hours and hours without moving. Then suddenly, I heard God so clearly speak to me and he said, get up. Go to your Bible. When I went to where my Bible was, y'all, it was opened. I knew I hadn't opened it. I was afraid. I thought I was losing my mind. When I looked down at my Bible, it was in the book of 2 Kings chapter 22. God said to me, begin reading at verse 14. And you guys, this is what, this is what it says. It reads, so Hilkiah the priest, Achan, Shaphan, and Isaiah went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, son of Tikvah, the son of Parhaz, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they talked with her. She said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, 
Tell the man who sent you to me, thus says the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon its inhabitants, according to all the words of the book which the king of Judah had read. And that is 2 Kings 22, 14 through 16. And I read it from the Amplified Version. Y'all, I, I finished reading. I, I was so confused. And God continued speaking to me. And this is what he said. You know my voice. You know exactly what I said to you. You know exactly what your purpose is. Your pastor is wrong. And do not be distracted from me by what he said to you. This is your assignment. Move forward. You guys, after that happened, I, I I was still confused. But the reason I was confused is because now I knew, I now knew the confusion was gone or the doubt was gone if I heard God correctly. I knew I heard God correctly. I, there's no way I could miss that. I knew exactly Nobody knew but me how I had sought the Lord, how I was seeking the Lord, how nobody knew what I was doing in my private time. And I knew for sure that I had heard God speak to me through Jeremiah calling me to the office of the prophetess. I knew that without a shadow of a doubt. What I was confused about is how could my pastor try to talk me out of what I know God said to me? Why would he try to? caused me to abort my purpose when it was his message that even put me on the path to seek God for my purpose. That's what I was confused about. I wasn't confused about what God said to me. It, I was saddened by my pastor's reaction. I was saddened because I loved him and I respected him. And he was my pastor. and He was the one that was leading me and teaching me. So that's where the confusion came in yet at. After that, about six months later, we had a women's prayer breakfast. And to my surprise, they invited a woman preacher to preach, to speak at our women's prayer breakfast from another city. And y'all, God showed out again. In the middle of her message, we had our name tags, right? So we had our names wrote on, our name tags was on our shirts. And so in the middle of her message, she looks out. She looks out at us and she says, Sister Judy. <laughs> I know she was talking to me because I was only Judy in the room. She said, yeah, you stand up. So I stood up. She says, everybody look at Sister Judy. God said he has put his words in her mouth. Listen to her when she speaks. Y'all, I feel my legs collapsed. I have never collapsed like that before. It's my legs gave out from under me and I just hit the floor because God, I could not, it blew my mind that God would publicly in front of people confirm my call. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. And I thought, after God did that, oh, my pastor, now my pastor is going to believe. Now my pastor is going to believe. Now he's finally going to believe. But he didn't, y'all. He still did it. And then about a year after that, it was our church anniversary. And we had a guest minister of the priest for the anniversary service. And it happened again. When he got through preaching, he told people that needed prayer to come get in the line. So I got in the prayer line and, you know, he was praying for each one of us. And when I was walking up to him, when it was my turn for prayer, he looks at me and then he says, give me back the microphone. And he gets on the mic and he says, you know what God has called you to do. You know that he has called you to be a prophet. You know that he has put his words in your mouth. 
But not only do you know, everybody here at this church knows as well. Don't be discouraged and don't be distracted. Move forward in your call and speak whatever the Lord tells you to speak. I couldn't, I could not believe it. I could not believe it. I could not believe it, y'all. Even now, as I'm talking about it, it was 21 years ago. I still can't believe that God did that. God wanted me to be sure. He wanted to get all doubt out of me. Any doubt whatsoever was down deep inside of me. He wanted to get that doubt out. Because he, he knew how important it was for me to know what I was born to do. And he knew how important his words were that he had put in my mouth and that would, he would continue to put in my mouth until I died for me to speak to the body of Christ. He knew how important that purpose was and he did not want me to abort my purpose. And that's why he kept sending confirmation after confirmation. And y'all, even after that confirmation, my pastor refused to believe and he refused to license me and ordain me to preach the gospel. He refused. And I stayed there at that church because I didn't feel the release to leave. So I stayed there. I stayed there a couple of more years. I stayed there. And finally, God gave me permission to leave. And I spent my maybe like three years on a sabbatical, spiritual sabbatical. I didn't go to anybody's church. I spent three years alone, shut up in my house with the Lord. <laughs> I, I spent, I mean, I spent three years ministering unto the Lord and seeking him and listening to him. And over time, he began to connect me with the right pastor, with the right mentors, with the right spiritual leaders that, I didn't even have to tell them what I was called to do. They discerned it. They discerned it. And it came out their mouth to me that I was a prophet. I didn't even tell them that. So God was still bringing confirmation. And I'm so glad, y'all, that I didn't let my former pastor or anybody else. Unbelief hinder me because I want to tell you something <laughs> only God the creator can tell you what you were born for only he can tell you what you were born for can't no man tell you that no man woman dog cat boy or girl can't anybody tell you that I don't care who they are I don't care if they are the pope the president the pastor or whoever they are they cannot tell you that they don't have that kind of authority Yes, we as pastors have authority. But I'm called to pastor and under shepherd God's people. I'm not to lord over them. I am not their God. And my word does not override what God says to them about their life. It does not. And any pastor that's out there doing that, they are going to answer when they stand, answer for it, when they stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We as pastors, we cannot do that because we will cause people to abort the purpose that God has put inside of them. And for any of you that's out there listening to me, maybe today, maybe next week, maybe next year, maybe five years from now, if you know you have saw God, and you know you heard God clearly tell you what your purpose is on this earth, what the assignment and the measure is on your life, and what the gifts that he has put inside you are to function in the body of Christ. Go forward. Move forward. You don't need anybody's affirmation, confirmation, or permission. Nobody but God. That's all you need. And when you know that, you know that, you know that, you know you heard God. And you know what you were called to do. Don't you dare. 
Don't you dare let anybody stop you. Don't you dare let anybody talk you out of it. Don't you dare let anybody make you abort your purpose. Don't you dare do that. Because you will master to God for it. You know God's voice. You hear him. Walk in what you know. Because people need what the Lord has put inside of you. I need what God put inside of you. We need each other. We're not an island out here by ourselves. We need each other. So I encourage you, if you don't know what you was born to do, if you don't know what your purpose is, seek Christ. He'll let you know. Seek him. Fast. Pray. Consecrate. Spend time with the Lord. Talk to him. Ask him. He will tell you. And if you already know, walk in it. Walk in the fullness of what God has called you to do. I will be praying for you guys. And thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much. I think this ends the part where I tell you my journey to Christ, my journey to salvation, my journey to surrendering to Christ as Lord, my journey to seeking God, to finding out why I was born, my journey into walking in my purpose, my journey, uh, what I had to go through to uh, fully walk in the call of my life, how it took years for me to be prepared and to be connected with the right spiritual leaders and to be licensed and finally ordained. I was already ordained by God, but you know how the laws of the land are. Uh, the church world wants you to be licensed and ordained by them. So I was, that finally happened. And so I shared my journey to salvation and to purpose with you guys. And so next week, however the Lord leads me, whatever testimony he wants me to share, uh, then I will go forward in that area, whatever he wants me to share. Until then, thank you for watching. I pray you guys are blessed. Have a great day. Have a great rest of the week. Just have a great life. <laughs> and remember, it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. I love you guys. Until next time, bye-bye.